Hello everyone. It's Kim from Fleece and Harmony. Welcome to episode 76 of our knitting podcast. I'm recording in our shop on our sheep farm in Belfast, Prince Edward Island, Canada. And welcome to everyone that's joined us again for another week. And if you're new here, this is a knitting podcast where we also talk about our sheep and our farm and other ramblings that come to my, whatever comes to my mind while I'm recording this. If you're watching this on the day that it was published, it's July 23rd, 2021. And it's definitely summer. So we are in the throes of summer. It's just been gorgeous weather, a little bit of rain in the morning to keep the grass growing. Afternoons have been beautiful, not too hot, unlike some parts of the rest of the world. I know we've been uh, struggling in the, with the heat but it's just been pretty much just a typical summer that you would want and expect. And we have visitors starting to arrive from uh, the other provinces for sure in Canada, and uh, soon we'll be uh, welcoming visitors from further away than that as well. So we're, we're pretty excited to have people out and about. Um, everybody is in the, in the summertime mood and ready to, uh, to well, still buy yarn, I hope, I don't know. <laughs> so we've moved the place where we're recording again uh, today. So we've tried to pick different spots in, within the shop. So today I'm recording in front of the Selkirk Worsted section of our shop. And we chose this location because it's been all about Selkirk Worsted this week. And I'll talk more about that. Um, it has to do with the Kate Davies cow that's going on. And I'll give you a little bit uh, more detail about that uh, later. I wanted to talk first about uh, questions that were asked when after the harmony part in the last episode. So in episode 75, we showed quite a long clip of our sheep out in the field. And we got quite a few questions about the sheep and some of you are very observant about the markings on the sheep and and uh, things like that so I'm gonna wanted to talk about that uh, the first question that was really interesting was the name of the sheep that came right up to the camera in that last uh, in that last episode and that sheep is named dot that's a, a relatively young you she's two years old two and a half years old and she is becoming the leader of the flock so there's sheep politics in a flock of sheep there's always one you that's kind of the leader so they um if she moves then the rest of the flock moves with her and that always used to be fancy and fancy is the speckled uh sheep that you see in our opening our introduction video and she's been with us since we bought the farm so she was one of the first sheep that was on the farm and she's here and she's been um, the leader of the flock ever since she was big enough to be to be the leader. And now it seems that she's becoming fairly old for a sheep. So she's, she's going, to, going to be nine years old. And uh, it seems like she might have relinquished some of her power to as a younger up and comer, which is uh, Dot. And somebody had commented that they liked Dot because it looked like she had moxie because she marched right up to the to the um, camera when we were recording the last time. And it is true, she has moxie, but she's also really, really friendly and comes, comes for scratches all the time. And um, she is becoming the leader, I think. So I, we can notice that Fancy kind of um, stays back a little bit more and uh, it's it's more the some of the younger sheep and in particular uh, dot that seems to be kind of leading the flock now super interesting to watch that happening that transition if you want and the um the rest of the sheep if they don't call it when they do the uh the comparison to people following along like a flock of sheep it's really true when one starts to move somebody gives a signal then they all move in the same direction and they tend to stick together, which makes it good if they get out because at least they stay together. So you're not, uh, they're not scattering all over the place. Well, that doesn't happen very often, thank goodness. But in the flock, it's a, it's a dynamic. And usually the one that is the, the dominant, well, dominant's not really the right, uh, the right word to describe it, but the one that's the, the leader, 
she'll be the one that if there's any danger as well that they, they sense something that's happening or somebody's approaching that they're not aware of she'll be in the front of the front of the flock and they come sometimes they stamp their feet so they can they can uh, certainly express their displeasure if somebody is coming too close that they don't know or if an animal comes too close a dog or a fox or something like that then uh, they do that so that's um dot and she does have moxie and she's also becoming the leader of the of the flock so we probably when we do other clips in the in the pasture she'll be in the front or coming closest to us uh, quite often so that's that was really that was really interesting i'm glad that somebody asked that uh, question because that gives us a chance to talk about things that people don't necessarily know about sheep politics the other thing that's happened on the farm is that uh, a couple episodes ago we mentioned that we had a new resident in our retired chicken coop which was a skunk and we didn't know if it was a male or a female skunk so we just name all the skunks that we see around here Ernest but it seems that Ernestine is the proper name for this skunk. It's a she and she's got two little babies. So Ken has seen them in the evening when he goes around to check to make sure all the fences are working and everybody's got water for the night and, and uh, the, his regular checks. And there's so now there's Ernestine and tagging behind her are these two little black and white balls of fluff, cute from a distance that are we're walking right along the fence line and going home for the evening I guess into the into the chicken coop so they're they're still there now there's three and I'm not quite sure what's going to happen <laughs> happen next because obviously we don't want to have three full adult skunks living on the farm so we do have a um a live trap that we've used to get rid of some that have been um a nuisance in the past so we just put a little bit of usually tuna or something like that canned tuna in the back of the trap it closes on them and catches them in the trap we put a blanket over the top of it and then we drive them somewhere far far away <laughs> from our farm and relocate them there's actually a rock quarry not too far away from where we live a shale quarry and they, it's surrounded by wood so there's nobody that lives really close to it so we drive in there and we've let a few uh, a few of our residents go there and it's uh it's far enough away that we don't seem to see them again so that might be the we'll wait till the the young are grown up and and uh, the skunk is uh on her own again probably i'm not sure where the little ones go but we'll we'll keep an eye out for them and you know the reason why we do that is because she's living in the back of or the retired chicken coop so there's no chickens in there anymore but it's attached to where the rabbits are and you can smell that there's a skunk in there but she's not in the same section of the building where the rabbit hutch is but the building is also a place where uh, Clyde our barn cat goes sometimes in the night so Clyde doesn't really like to stay in the house during the day, or she stays in the house during the day and sleeps. But at night she likes to go out and she's roaming around in the barns and everything. And when she's ready to kind of bed down for the night, she goes to sleep in that, that same building. And the other morning she came in and I don't think she got sprayed directly because we would have known that it's very, it's a very strong, strong smell. And if anybody has smelled a skunk, you think you know what it smells like, but if you've been sprayed by a skunk, you know it's a whole other thing when you're actually up close and personal <laughs> with the smell. So she didn't smell like that, 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 it's, that was that strong, but she definitely came into contact, maybe went, even went through the grass after the skunk had sprayed something at something else, I'm not sure, but she was uh, relegated to outside for a couple of days, but that's, it disappeared for pretty quickly because I don't think it was a direct, a direct hit. Thank goodness. And there's, that's a whole other, a whole other uh, story when your animals get sprayed by, <laughs> sprayed by the skunks. So that's kind of it for the farm update. So now we've got three skunks and now you know about sheep politics as well. So without further ado, we'll get to the whips and I'm going to just talk very briefly about Paisley. Um, I have to apologize for the last episode. Um, I was supposed to show a tutorial about a sloped bind off and 
the we live obviously in the country and the internet was so bad while I was trying to upload my videos that I wasn't even able to upload the tutorial that I did. So I have uploaded that tutorial and I'll explain about that in a minute. And um, the podcast was late the last time because of the internet as well. I actually had to upload the video to publish it using my data on my cell phone. So needless to say, I wasn't too happy. It was a little frustrating. And I had to cut things out of the, that I planned to show in the, uh, in the podcast because I couldn't upload the, the supplementary videos. So hopefully I don't have that problem this time. So we're gonna kind of do another recap about Paisley. Um, I, I have started the um, second sleeve. So um, just for people that may be new here, um, I have the Paisley, the, this is a Paisley by Sidsel Hoybeck and it's just a beautiful jacket that with an all, all over pattern patterning. I was gonna leave that there for a second so people can get a good look. And it is steeped down the front because it's a cardigan and it's steeped on the sleeve in doing the sleeves as well. And uh, I haven't cut anything yet because I'm just working on the sleeves. At the last episode, I had finished the first sleeve and I showed a close up of that. And what I was talking about in the last episode is that the smooth edge for the bind off for the sleeve. So the pattern is typical of making a sleeve cap where you bind off so many stitches every however many rows. So I started to do that bind off on this sleeve and you'll see a close up uh, of it in the tutorial if you're if you want more detail, um, more detail picture. I started doing that. You get stair steps, as I explained in the last episode, and I do. I did know about the sloped bind off, and I thought to myself, why am I doing the stair steps when I have to sew it in? It's easier when you have a straight edge. So I changed and I started doing the sloped bind off. So I'm not going to show the tutorial here. If you want to see the tutorial, I'm doing um, a section at the at the end of the this recording so that you can go to the tutorial to look at it. And I'm also start I also started writing um, chapters in the show notes. So if there's any part of the episode that you want to skip to or you want to take another look at, I've put the time signatures in the show notes so that you can go to that section of the of the video. Apparently YouTube is supposed to create chapters for you automatically when you do that, but so far it hasn't worked for me. So I'm doing everything that you're supposed to do to get them to, to work. But I think it's, um, it might be some kind of beta, um, feature that they were doing. And I'm not sure that it's gotten to Belfast PEI yet because it doesn't seem to be working. However, I do have the time signatures in the in the show notes if you want to take a look at them and if you want to skip to the tutorial that'll that I will show closer to the end of the podcast. So I am just on the second sleeve and like it planned it should be the same as the first and I've just got the color work cuff done so far and I will um, I'm ready to start the the waffle pattern um, and then start the increases for the for the sleeve so that's that's coming along really well so that's all I'm going to say about that and like I said the tutorial is in a se separate section later in the, in this video if you want to go and take a look at the sloped bind off tutorial for your sleeve caps and whatever other places where you need to bind off in in uh, a sequence I cr usually would create kind of a stair step look however now I have of course I finished my Madeline from the last um, the last episode and I will take pictures of it proper pictures so standing up because I didn't stand up the last time because I hadn't finished the duplicate stitch on on that but it's done now it's actually hanging on the wall behind me but I don't think you can see it in the frame of the video and I have pictures of it on, I'll, I'll do a little modeling and insert it here. So there's Madeline. I'm really, really pleased with it. It was a really fun pattern to knit and I, uh, I'm looking forward to wearing it. It's pretty warm for something that's made out of si si uh, kid silk haze, which is a very fine yarn, 
but it's it's extremely warm when you wear it and it's uh it's it's uh held double of course so it's a little bit thicker but it's it's really going to be comfortable and nice and it's was a nice project to to work on the third thing that i wanted to talk about in um that i guess that's an fo uh, madeline or finished object but i do have another whip and that's my even doom sweater that i'm knitting for the kate davies knit along and i am loving it i chose colors that were um, in selkirk worsted which is why i decided to sit in front of our wall of selkirk worsted for this episode i chose colors that were similar to the colors that kate davies had um, used in her pictures in her book this book is from the 10 years in the making book and these colors um, are similar to the colors that Kate had chosen in her original design. So Kate shows this pattern as um, knit in two different versions. There's a um, there's the uh, one that's one color with the, the cream colored stripes in between breaking it up. And then there's a one that's multicolored. And of course there's a picture um, being shown. And these are the colors in Selkirk Worsted that I'm using. So I'll just uh, name them off because people will ask. So the dark purple is Amethyst Brooch. The um, cream color is natural. So it's just the natural wool, not dyed. The rosy pinkish red is Watermelon. And that's from um, another gradient kit, the red gradient, which I forgot to show in the last episode. So I'm going to show that in the shop update. And then I have Lady Slipper, which is from the Amethyst, uh, the Amethyst Gradient that you've seen. And there's Autumn Birch and Sea Foam. So these six colors are the colors that I'm doing my Even Dune sweater in. And um, this is, it's kind of a cool construction. It is, um, oh, it's still, it's attached to my balls. Just one second here. I had laid this all out so that it would be easy for me to show, but it's kind of a cool construction. It's top down, but you don't start with the, the neck. You're going to add the, uh, the ribbing of the neck after. And what you do is Kate has you start with a small number of, of stitches, and then you are doing increases to get a shape for the curve around the back of the, the back of the neck. So you have um, knit front and backs and you use make one and make, make one right and make one left. And you have your um, stitch markers laid out so that you know where you're going to divide for the sleeves and for the front and so forth after. So I've got the first two color stripes um, started. The first stripe is the amethyst brooch. Then you've got a break with two rows of your whatever your your neutral color is that you're going to use in the pattern and then I'm on the second stripe which is the watermelon those really really fast and um, luckily for us the Selkirk worsted is a good match for the gauge that uh, Kate is suggesting with her her yarn and um, it's so it's working really well and for the first time ever I think I actually got gauge with the gauge swatch with the first the first try um, I did get gauge but I wanted to go down a needle size because I uh, preferred the fabric so I did go down a needle size and uh, so I'm making uh, making adjustments as I go if I need more stitches there is the sweater is designed with positive ease and I'm okay if I don't have any ease like just it's a, a zero ease so not tight but not with not being loose as well and I think it's going to turn out to be just kind of um, no no ease whatsoever on mine. It's really it it goes really fast. I just cast this on like in, late in the evening last night and uh, was able to get uh, go pretty quick pretty quickly with it. So for me, that's going to be something new, a project that is will most likely be finished fairly <laughs> fairly quickly, and not a whole year uh, a whole year project. So. Um, a lot of people, it's been so fun packing up the boxes of people that are buying their yarns for the knit along because there's so many great color combinations. With, a lot of people are doing even doing and uh, they're doing using the gradient kits to do stripes and things like that. So it's really, uh, it's really great. 
So the other than um, talking about the construction and the way this goes, there's not much more I can say about about this yet because I've only just gotten started, but it is a top-down um, construction with raglan sleeves and then you knit in the round once you finish this um, this neck shaping and the arm shaping, shape, shaping, then you do join it in the round and uh, knit in the round for the rest of the way. So that's even doing really fun and I'm really enjoying it. So that leads me to talk about the cowl. So just to update everybody, there is a few uh, housekeeping things that I wanted to talk about. So the last episode, I talked about the fact that there is a, a thread on the Ravelry page in our group. So it's in the Fleece and Harmony group and there's a page or a thread for the Kate Davies Knit Along. I've put uh, two threads there, one for um, the, uh, the cowl and one for finished, uh, finished projects, so you can, you can post your projects there. But I know that not everybody is on Ravelry or using Ravelry, so we've also created a similar thread on our form. And the way you join our form is from our website. And if you look down in the lower right hand corner on the navy bar that's at the bottom of our homepage, you will see a place to put in your email um, address to subscribe to our newsletter. And uh, you also have a, um, on the left hand side, you, if you look at the little menu that's down there, you will have a, um, a link for the community forum. And if you click on that link, then you can enter the uh, enter the form, and there's different things there. There's a couple different threads that have been started over over time, and there's a specific thread thread for the Kate Davies knit along. So just to recap, the knit along runs until November 30th, and you can knit any Kate Davies pattern that you want, and you can use any yarn that you want to join the cal. We are. Um, we came up with the idea for the cal because of the 10 years in the making book, which is Kate's um, kind of retrospective uh, of some of her top patterns that she's done over the 10 years that she's been that she's been designing. Uh, if you want to see the cover of it, I have it right here. And uh, this book is uh, is lovely. It's, she's uh, I think she's adap adapted or um, renovated some of the patterns, so they're they're definitely size inclusive for people that want to make uh, you know the difference to having trouble finding sizes in some of her maybe her some of her older patterns. So the, the these have been updated, and uh, it's just a, a lovely book with uh, lovely patterns. It's been so fun for me to see comments that people are making. People are writing, uh, asking for help with yarn choices to, to knit the patterns. And I'm discovering all kinds of patterns of Kate's that I wasn't familiar with. And she's just, it's just remarkable uh, what, she's, uh, what she's accomplished in 10 years of designing. She has also um, donated a prize, two prizes actually, for the Knit Along. And I did receive them right after I recorded the last podcast. The first one is this beautiful North Star cowl. cowl. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, from on her website. She has kits that you can buy to knit things, but she also has finished goods there. And this is one of the, the items that she has on her website. Uh, the color is buoy and silver if you want to look it up and uh, this has just it just feels beautiful it's just a gorgeous uh, knit um, you can use it at, like a snood or as, as a cowl and that's one of the prizes and the other prize that Kate sent was a journal with the knitting season uh, logo on it. So a journal for your knitting projects and some lucky person will uh, be the winner of that as well. The um, cowl comes in this little, little bag as well. You could use it as a little project bag. Uh, Chiago also sent us a prize and I did mention this one specifically in the last podcast and they have sent us one of the shorty sets. This is the small shorty set. So those needles are the size, uh, the, the, the small type of Chiago needles. And the, I'm just gonna show you, you have the pouch and then in this little pouch contains the needles. 
And for people that aren't familiar, oh, stop is really, for people that are not familiar with Chiago needles in the shorty sets, they actually give you um, two sets of tips for each size that are represented in the kit. One set of tips is three inches long and the other set of tips is two inches long. So you can get really, really short. Um, you have your cables inside as well. So you can have a really small circumference uh, circular needles with this set. And what I do when I'm using them is I start with, uh, depending on how many stitches you have cast on, I start with uh, the two inch on either side of the cable. And then as I'm casting on stitches, I switch one of the tips for a three inch to make it a little bit bigger. And then when I'm at my full circumference for the sleeve or the sock or whatever, uh, then I switch to two, three inches. So you can use, uh, you can use the different size needles to make a big variety of lengths for the, for the, uh, the circular that you're making with this kit. There's also all the regular little goodies that uh, Chiago puts in, like um, end stoppers and a f some stitch markers, and there is also a needle gauge in here. So this will be a prize for someone for the Kate Davies Knit Along as well. And we'll choose somebody's name. So I think what we've decided that we're going to do, we're going to do um, at least one random draw. So of all of the uh, finished objects that are posted both in the form on our website and the Ravelry uh, group that we have, we'll take all of those submissions and we'll do a random draw for one of the prizes. And then we decided that we will do something a little bit different. So there's uh, four people that are working in the, in the shop. So we will each choose a pattern or a project that we liked for some reason. It could be the, you know, the colors that were chosen or the, the pattern itself that was knit or whatever, whatever was, would be one of our favorites. And then we'll put those four selections into a hat and we'll draw from one of those, uh, we'll draw one name from that. So it's still kind of random but we're also recognizing the things that we were impressed individually uh, with. So we'll let you know that. And then there's a third one, we'll, we'll decide what we're gonna do. It might be just another random, random draw. So like I said, it ends on November 30th. So you have lots of time to get your projects uh, in and done. Uh, if you submit more than one project, you have more than one name or draw a number in the, the draw. So you'll be, uh, have more chances. And um, I'm really excited to see the projects because I've already seen some of the <laughs> some of the um, yarn requests and orders that we've sent out, and there's going to be some fantastic knockout projects I know. And just a reminder that we do carry all of Kate's books in our shop, so you can order them online. Uh, we have everything, all of the knitting, the books that contain knitting patterns that she's, uh, that she's has. So those are all available on online through our online store or in our shop. If you're, if you happen to be coming live to the shop, that would be great to meet you. And uh, we have the books here as well. So for the, without further ado, we'll go to the shop update. And in the last episode, I talked about the green gradient as being the last gradient that we had to feature and it was the last gradient that we made but I forgot that the newsletter people had seen the red gradient but I hadn't shown on, on the red gradient on the podcast yet. So if people are not subscribed to our newsletter you may not know that we always feature new things to the newsletter folks first. So every second Friday, we put out a newsletter that goes just to those subscribers. And then this, this, the alternate Friday, we send out the newsletter advertising the podcast. And then we show things on the podcast, obviously, that all of you, have, you will see. So I missed showing the red gradient on the last podcast because in my mind, I'd already introduced it, but it was only in the newsletter. So the red gradient is um, based on rhubarb. So the color that's in our collection that we already have is rhubarb. And I'll show you those full size skeins after this is rhubarb. And in this gradient, we went darker and then we went lighter. So we have a new color called cranberry. And then we have watermelon, which is the color that I'm using in my Even Dune 
sweater and we have grapefruit and we have apple blossom is this pale pale pink so just to give you a closer view of them cranberry and then you have rhubarb which is one of our best selling colors so just to compare the two the rhubarb is is a lot deeper watermelon so this is so interesting because it starts to go down into uh, to pinks, obviously, as we uh, do the, the gradient. And then we have grapefruit, which is like a soft, soft pink. And then the softest one is apple blossom. So there you are for the red gradient. So we have those in stock and uh, you can go ahead and, and order them so like all of the gradients you do have the minis and you have the full skeins and you can you can uh, order whatever whatever you need for people that are looking um and back to kate davies it, the, and sorry the gradients are all selkirk worsted yarn if you're looking at um the like for example the even dune requires two of kate's skeins for most of the sizes and this uh, two of Kate skeins is actually equivalent to one of our full skeins and one of the minis. So the, the minis in the gradient are 50 yards. So it, with one full skein and one mini, you have enough for, um, to make up the same length and weight as two of Kate Davies uh, skeins. So if you're trying to do substitutions with the patterns that, that would, and you wanna do like some people are doing um, with the with the gradient in the even dune, then that's that's how much yarn you need. Okay, so the next thing in the shop is the uh, puffin hat. So I showed this on a sneak peek of the puffin hat. It's the proper name is the 2021 puffin hat. This is a little uh, beanie that was designed by Carla Wolf. And it's just so cute. So you have the puffins on there all the way around. And we've made, this is also knit in Selkirk worsted. And we have knit, uh, sorry, made kits to make this hat. So you have um, really small amounts that you need to do the beak, the colors uh, on the beak. So we are giving you the yarn just to do, to do that. The main color of the hat is stones. And then um, the rim, the brim is um, bonfire, a color called bonfire. And then we, we give you all of the, everything that you need to finish it. The reason why we talked about duplicate stitch in the last episode, and we did a tutorial for that, is that I was doing duplicate stitch on my Madeline sweater, but we're also using duplicate stitch on the beaks. So you don't wanna have to carry that you know, for two stitches of uh, bonfire in the beak, you don't want to have to carry it all the way around the hat and then be knitting with three colors or four colors in some cases. So this little section right at the beak is done with duplicate stitch. And I'll put a, a link to the tutorial if you missed that in the last uh, the last episode. So this is really just sweet. And I had did some research for some fun facts about puffins when I did the newsletter last time. And uh, I, it, it, they're amazing, actually. <laughs> they, they, I learned all kinds of things. That the, the, the biggest colonies are actually in Iceland. And, um, but Newfoundland Canada, in Canada has uh, one of a pretty large colony and it's the I think it's the largest one outside of Iceland if I'm not mistaken but I that might not be right they have about 400,000 a colony of about 400,000 uh, puffins that come every summer to the the coast of Newfoundland and that's where their breeding ground or their nesting and breeding ground is so the so I'm just going to give you some of these fun facts because it was pretty amazing. They mate for life. So the puffins have the same mate for all of their life, but they only see each other in the breeding ground. So they spend eight months of the year out at sea. And when they go out to sea, the pair is not together. But when they come back to the breeding ground, to the colony, they meet up 
and they do what they have to do to raise their young and then they go back out to sea and then they don't see each other again until the next year when they're when they're uh, at the at the colony and while the puffin is out to sea the um the colorful part of their beak actually molts off so they shed that and um, they also shed the puffins have this little makes them look like they're they have like a little harlequin dot black dot on the top and the bottom of their eye and they sometimes shed that that marking as well so i'm not sure if it's um if it's their their um a, t a change in color of their skin or if it's a feathers that make it black but that goes away so they then they have a gray beak and they have no markings on their eyes and uh they're pretty uh and i think that their feet go gray as well so they they look drab out in the ocean and the article that i was reading about them said that you you hardly would recognize them out in the when they're out at sea because you're so used to recognizing this these beautiful these beautiful colors i um while we were making these kits this color that's on the brim of the hat and on the on the beak is bonfire, which is a color that we've had in our selection for quite a while. And I couldn't stop looking at it in the dye vat and when we were skeining up the little skeins for the, the hats. And I just, I loved it. So I'm gonna show it because, and I this is my favorite summer top that I wear. And it all came together while I was getting dressed for this episode because I love this top. And look what color it is it's almost exactly bonfire so if you're looking for a red that's definitely a red but is right in the middle between red and orange and it doesn't have any blue in it it's just like perfectly in the middle of a some spectrum bonfire is your red that you that you want and uh, i'm thinking that i might actually do another even dune sweater and I might just use this with the with the cream color and I think that would be well it'll look like what I'm wearing except it, it'll be a sweater for winter with uh, made out of wool but it's just such a gorgeous gorgeous color I love it so that's it so the kit for the puffin hat is um, is online in the shop and we are selling the patterns for Carla. So um, the pattern is, is included in the cost of the kit and then all of those funds will go directly to, to Carla. So the designer is uh, getting uh, compensated for her work that she did and it's such a cute pattern. So we hope you knit lots of them and great uh, great gifts for for people and uh, if you love puffins it's uh you can sport your uh sport your love for the puffins with that that hat so uh you can order that those on the website uh now they're there the other thing that we have in the shop is that we've restocked uh the wool socks so for those that don't know about these wool socks these are we rarely sell things that have been already made but these uh, socks are made by one of the, uh, the women that works with us in the shop, Janet. And she knits them on her knitting machine, but she finishes them by hand. And the wool that's used in these socks is 100% wool. We spun this wool specifically for these socks. Janet told me what she wanted, to, what kind of yarn that she wanted to, to make them. So I designed a yarn specifically for that so it's not one of the regular ones that we sell in the balls here and it doesn't have any mohair in it so our regular sock yarn has mohair but this is 100 percent wool it's um a three ply and the sock and the socks are knit knit with that at a at a tension that gives a good durability because there's no 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 synthetic fibers or no mohair for strengthening and it is a hundred percent natural black wool from our black sheep and lambs so this is not dyed but it's also the only color you can get the socks in and it's uh it's natural black but it's really like a really dark dark chocolate brown the ones that we had that we uh, showed on two podcasts ago i guess we sold out right away but we so we we're back in stock with these uh with these socks and i'll put the i've um, rather than putting sizes, I'm measuring the foot, and they're divided on the um, on the 
website with the size of the foot. So you'd have to measure your foot to know what size it is that you, uh, that you would need. So those are back in stock. All right, so I think that that's actually it for the shop update. And um, I've gone over, I don't think I forgot anything. This uh, I did forget, we have a new color of yarn. And I think I talked about this before, that sometimes when you're dyeing yarn, you um, get what you, exactly what you expected, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get something that you didn't expect. So this was a batch that was supposed to be another color and it didn't quite work out. We got a new color and the color is, it's this kind of beautiful um, gray and mauve tone and it's not, it's variegated and it is really beautiful. So instead of um, over dyeing it or, um, you know, not giving it love but by giving it a name and just putting it in the shop without a name we decided we were going to name it and the name is mermel so it's not maroon it's not purple it's mermel and the, we didn't come up with that name ourselves ken has had he's a grown man now but he had he was a little boy at one time and for some reason he couldn't say purple so he said mermel and it this is the perfect name for this this color so that will be in the shop we have a, a batch of uh, batch of this and if you like this kind of mauve it's very subtle and heathery looking and uh it's a great color and of course there's, there'll be a photo there so you can see it up close so that's the last that's the last thing from from the shop so sometimes there's happy mistakes because this may be something that will that will keep uh it's very uh subdued and subtle um, in tones that we love these these mauvey purpley tones so I think that's it I'm just gonna look at my table and make sure I haven't missed anything so that is everything so now what's gonna happen is the tutorial on the slope bind off is following immediately after that in the loop learning section so I'll put a, a little um, introduction to that there so you'll be able to see that so we're going to go to that right now and then we'll come back and I'll introduce the next uh, the next sections as well so on to the tutorial sloped bind off so this video is going to be about sloped bind off and this would be applied when you need to bind off um, so many stitches at the beginning of a round such as a sleeve doing a sleeve cap uh, sometimes can happen um, if you're applying something around the neck and so forth so what ends up happening so the instructions for this part of the, um, the paisley is that you bind off two stitches at the beginning of every round and you what happens is when you bind off two stitches you get a flat spot then your work goes up then on the next round you would bind off two stitches and you'd go up you'd bind off two stitches and then you get the stair stepping effect all the way around um, and I started to do the bind off the regular way as uh, just a regular bind off doing the two stitches and you can see that I had stair steps here then I had done my um, this would have been the third row that I did too and I thought well this is I know how to do a sloped bind off, so why am I doing the stair step? The difference is that the end result is the same, but the difference is is that with the sloped bind off, you get a nice smooth edge as opposed to these stair steps. When you're sewing in the sleeve, you can you just sew it in, um, you remove that notch basically by putting it into the seam. And um, so if you're doing a really good job setting in your sleeve, you don't actually see the fact that there's stair steps in the, in the seam because you've, you sew it in a way that you, you um, eliminate the look of that. The problem is, is that if you're not super careful about the way that you're um, sewing in these notches, then you can see a slight pucker sometimes where the excess, uh, the excess yarn is in the seam. So to eliminate that, you can do this sloped bind off. So I'm going to show you how you do that. So the way you set this up 
is you would bind off your first two stitches as you would normally. So you knit one, knit the second one, and then you bind off. Okay, so then you, um, that's one, one bind off. I flipped one stitch so far, and here's the second bind off. I flipped a second stitch. Okay, so that would be the first one. Now I'm going to just knit to the end. So I'm at the end, and in this example, I'm going to show you um, how you do it on both ends because you'll have to do it in purl as well if you're knitting flat. So we're just going to purl, and I'm going to bind off um, in the purl. So purl one, purl the second one. Move my stitch, that's the first bind off. Curl, that's the second stitch bound off. And of course you would do three or four or whatever your pattern asks. I'm gonna purl over to the other end now. So I purled over to the last stitch on the far end and I'm going to slip that stitch. I'm going to turn the work and now this is where the sloping part comes. Oh, I'm trying to do a continental. I'm going to slip the first two stitches and I'm just going to tension my yarn here so that I don't have a big loop. And I'm going to take the first slip stitch, put it over the second slip stitch, so like a regular bind off, except I didn't knit that stitch, I slipped it. And then I'm going to knit the next stitch, so that's the first bind off, and this is the second bind off stitch. And you can see already, you don't have a stair step, it's smooth. I'm going to knit over to the end. And I'm at the last stitch. I'm going to slip that stitch just like that. Okay, and now I'm going to go back the other way. Same thing, only we're purling this time. I'm going to just orient, orient my yarn properly. Okay, so I'm slipping the first stitch. And I'm slipping the second stitch. And I am, I'm just going to hold my yarn so I don't get a big loopy loop. Switch the um, slip, or sorry, <laughs> pull the stitch over. First one, that's your first bind off. Purl the next stitch and just as you normally would do in your bind off there. And you can see, I think you can see that there's not a stair step there. Now it's a smooth edge as well. So now I'm going to purl all the way over. Okay, I'm at my last stitch. I don't purl it. I slip it straight onto the needle, the right needle. Turn my work. And I will... I want to keep wanting to do continental. I will slip the first two stitches on the right side, tension my yarn. I'm going to pull the first slip stitch over the second one. That's your first bind off. Knit and then bind off that second one as you would normally. And you can see that it's still 
perfectly smooth, not jogging. Okay, so I'm going to knit now, and I will switch to continental knitting for the next, the next one. Okay, I'm at the last stitch. I'm going to slip. Okay, so since I'm on a purl side, I'm going to start with uh, purl. And I'm using continental, but it's exactly the same, the same thing. So you're going to slip, slip. I'm going to bring the first slip stitch over the second one. Just going to keep a bit of tension on this. Then I'm going to purl the next stitch and bind off as normal and no matter how many you would do if you're doing two in this case I'm doing two but if you were doing three you would just do a normal bind off I'm going to purl over to the end and show you what that looks on the other like on the other side and you're going to slip and you're set up for the next row so you can see how this looks thing of beauty <laughs> no stair steps just this nice smooth edge so when you go to sew in you'll just find that that's a lot easier uh, easier to manage so now I'm going to just do a regular bind off and finish off the swatch and I'm going to use the same swatch for the next uh, the next tutorial and we're back so I hope that you enjoyed that and I'm pretty sure that after you uh, if you tackle that if you haven't done that sloped bind off before you'll be doing that especially when you're when you have to do coming to the sewing up when you do the sewing up you're going to really appreciate the fact that it's uh, that there's that nice smooth edge to sew into your uh, to your sleeves so the next um, section, we're going to do another episode of In the Mill, like we've been doing uh, every week now. And we're just going to continue on with, um, in episode, I think it was 72, I had shown the whole, the tour of the mill and shown the whole process of how we produce the, the yarn, but not with any of the machines working. So when we first started podcasting, we did a section of a series called Welcome to Our World, which now I'm re-showing because it was never published as a separate as separate videos. It was all in the full episode. So I'm extracting the Welcome to Our World segments out of the early episodes and I'm putting, rebranding them as in the mill. And uh, we're showing, we're gonna show the whole process from the getting the fleece to uh, spinning the yarn and, and dyeing it. So this is the second in the series. It's called, it's washing the fleece. So we're gonna go back in time and back into the mill and watch washing the fleece in the, in the mill section. And we'll meet you back here again. Okay, so when we're washing fleeces, we use our specially designed washer that uses very little water and very low agitation. We do use some soap, so any amount of agitation in hot water with soap means that the fleece would felt. So this is designed to prevent felting. Here Ken's just mixing it up a little tiny bit and literally this is all we'll do to it and then we let the washer do the rest itself through a series of soaking and agitation cycles. Then the washer will drain uh, itself out and the fleece goes out onto these drying racks overnight so that it's dry enough to move on to the next step in the process. Okay, so now we've done skirting and this is the, this will be washing. And I mentioned this in the last podcast, but we will do shearing at the end because when we film these, these segments, it was just the time in the year, it wasn't shearing time, so we'll do the shearing at the end. If you're wondering what happened to the very first step, it's gonna come, come at the end. Anyway, it's all in a circle in the end of uh, the, the life of a sheep farmer. So um, that was washing the wool, and then we, uh, we're gonna do uh, the next step in the next episode as well. So that leaves us finally at the end of our, our podcast. So if you've enjoyed it, I hope that you give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Uh, our subscribe subscriptions have kind of slowed down a little bit. So that really helps grow the channel if you can subscribe to the video if you liked it. 
and you can also click your notifications so the little bell so that you'll know when we release new um, new episodes and um, I, as always I love to read the comments I'm answering everybody I, I don't think I've missed anybody I try to answer every every comment so you can leave comments uh, in the um, in the comment section and I'll just draw your attention to the show notes as well because I, every time uh, we, we release a video we do do um, really comprehensive show notes so every all the links to all the products we show we have a collection link so we gather up any product that we show on the podcast I put it in under one link if you go to the website with through that link you'll see all of the products that we talked about specifically and uh, I like I said I'm putting the chapters in there now so even if YouTube doesn't recognize them as chapters and divide up the the video that way you do have the time signatures for the different sections that you might want to you might want to um, look at and uh, we do like give credit do all the credits and everything in those uh, in those show notes so I hope that you check those out and finally we end our podcast every two weeks with the harmony part so today um, the harmony part is a bit of a, a strange one usually I try to get really very zen but uh, this one is really, I would say, more hypnotic than Zen. It's um, we have to renovate one of the pastures on our farm, and they were out there working on it. And Ken actually shot this uh, this video for this part, and we're gonna call it the harmony part because it's mesmerizing watching somehow watching that tractor go around tilling the earth and getting it ready for the seeds that we're gonna plant in it. So if you want to uh, to uh, relax for a few minutes and listen to some peaceful music while you're watching the tractor go around then this harmony parts for you so i hope you enjoy it hope you enjoyed the podcast uh this week and uh we'll see you in two weeks time stay safe and hope you have a great two weeks bye